morning, everybody. So we are Fred and Nico. We are two of the three founders of BlaBlaCar. And uh, we wanted to share our experience today uh, regarding growing BlaBlaCar and uh, the, the story behind it. So the challenges that we're facing today at the fast-growing startup in the sharing economy are that we need to innovate, we need to grow, and we need to synchronize our actions. We'll go through those steps, and we will see how we make sure that we actually achieve the goals we have, and that we actually take part in changing the world. We wanted to share our insights, and actually, since the subject of this uh, conference, this WeShare conference this year, is the age of communities, we wanted to talk about our internal communities. At BlaBlaCar, we are 125 people. We're very motivated individuals. As you can see, we, uh, we are part of the WeShare movement uh, on the picture. And actually, uh, our average age is 29. And actually, we're building the new transport network for the future based on sharing economy. And the strongest thing we remarked was that we were sharing values. And Nico will be presenting us what it means. Thanks, Fred. So one thing we noticed when we, uh, when we hire people and when we formed the team, actually, that now became like a, over 120 people at Bad Car, we realized that people don't join us to get a job, actually. They join us to essentially join an adventure and, and to, in many ways because it's meaningful for them. And as we realized that, we also realized that in many ways we share the same values. And when I mean the shares of values, not necessarily the black car values, but our values here, right? The sharing economy, uh, and they came here for a reason. And um, so very quickly we realized that we could actually create those values actually from our internal communities and our companies. And we realized something else. We, we realized that as you start a, a community or a company, uh, actually two things really matter. Processes and culture, and in a way values. Uh, and in the, in the very early days actually, values and culture is probably the most important. And you, you might have seen, actually, because it came in the press recently, what uh, Peter Thiel actually told the um, Airbnb founders. And he told them, I think, a couple of years ago when he invested, uh, just remember one thing, here's my advice, don't fuck up the culture. And in a way, you know, the, the best way not to do that is to have strong values and also shared values uh, by your employees and your community. Um, so we knew we had something a bit special because you know, all the people joining Black Black Heart joined Black Black Heart because they shared these values around sharing and around the sharing economy. And the challenge for us was uh, how to extract those values actually from our employees. Uh, so what we decided to do is we went for, um, a year ago actually, we went for a, for a ski weekend, uh, a retreat uh, for three days. And obviously we went skiing, drinking, and, and partying, but we've also uh, taken the old company in a, in, a, in a room which happened to be actually a movie theater uh, for over two hours, I think. And, uh, and over time, we, you know, we asked people to brainstorm and extract the values. And that's how we created uh, about 10 values for the company, which was, which was in a way crowdsourced um, uh, from the employees. So Fred is going to start with, uh, with some of them. So the first values deal with how we innovate and what spirit we have to have in order to continue to innovate and to make sure that we're actually changing things. What we remarked is that at the core of everything, for us, is passion. Um, you can't really innovate if you don't have passion. And actually, ideas that change the world come usually from passion, because you need to go out of the normal path to innovate, and you can't do that without passion. So um, here we just show Edison, like a great inventor. He had the passion. He invented the light bulb. He invented the photograph, the motion picture camera. Uh, we haven't invented all, all this now, but we try to uh, to, to have the spirit which puts us into a situation where we are actually able to innovate thanks to the fact that we have the passion moving us. The second thing we remarked is that there is no way you can go around using your own service if it's a service you want to propose to other people. So we remarked that there are three very complementary and <coughs> cyclical steps into making innovation reality. Um, those three steps are think it, build it, use it. And actually, our brain functions differently when you think, when you build things, and when you use it. When you use your service, you're actually a real user, and you can feel 
everything that the users will be feeling when they'll be using the service, which helps you improve the service when you go back to the sync phase and then the build phase. And in the sharing economy, since we're building services, we're very lucky because we can actually try our own service. It's not always the case when you build new products or new services. But in the sharing economy, we're building <coughs> services for everybody, which means including us, and so we're using it. Um, so what we do sometimes is, is we try to think about, uh, for those of you who, uh, who are old enough to know MacGyver, um, we try to think what would MacGyver do in this situation, and that's the sync phase, and then MacGyver also builds it, and then he uses it, uh, sometimes at his own life's risks, but he uses it, and this is the whole cycle of innovation. Um, mm. Those are the first steps that makes us able to innovate and continue to go forward. But then, when you're using it, and some users are using it, you enter into the growth phase. And the growth phase is something different because you need to get millions of people actually using the service just like you do. Nico will be presenting us all the growth values. Thanks, so. For those who know me, or worse, actually, those who work with me, they probably know I'm a, I'm a bit of a growth junkie, and I like things to scale and to, to scale fast. And that actually started like when I started my career in Silicon Valley, and, um, and I had my Silicon Valley heroes. Um, and, and one of them was Vinod Kosla. So I don't know if, you know if some of you know Vinod Kosla, but he was the, um, the co-founder of Sun Microsystem back in the 80s, a uh, very successful company. Then he went on and, um, uh, to work as a VC at Kleiner Perkins. Uh, and he started the, um, all the clean tech investing at Kleiner Perkins with um, Vice President Al Gore and John Doerr. Uh, and then he went on to create his own firm actually to invest in clean tech. Uh, and he said something that, that stayed with me and you know, that we carry actually um, at Babacar, which is if it doesn't scale, it doesn't matter. And he said that several times. If it doesn't scale, it doesn't matter you know, if you do a clean tech project, if you do anything. Uh, and I think you know, it doesn't apply to everything. It probably doesn't apply to all of us here. But it probably applies to most of us. Uh, if we want to do something meaningful, it needs to scale and grow. Um, and if we think of what we do here, uh, you know, if we we're building a ride-sharing service for 100,000 people in France, it's cool, but it doesn't really matter, right? It's not going to change things. Uh, if we start doing that for millions of people in France, it gets interesting. If we do that for you know, all of Europe, if we do that globally, and we start moving millions of people every, every month on a new people-powered network, which is what we try to do, then it matters. Then you're changing the lines. Um, so we decided to have some of our values actually around scaling and around growth. Uh, and I'll go through that, I'm conscious of time, so I'll go through that pretty, pretty quickly. But uh, one of them is as you grow, you'll screw up, right? Because you're going to go fast, and as you go fast, you always screw up. And it's pretty key actually for us to foster a culture of screwing up in a way. Uh, because if you don't do that, then you're never going to scale. So, so we have this, uh, this value, which is fail, learn, succeed, uh, which is actually we encourage people to try to experiment and to fail and then to rebound and e eventually fix it and, and succeed. And that's how we've done most things from the product to our communication to, to scaling internationally. Um, so that's how you learn uh, cycling. Actually, that's what I was doing this weekend actually with my daughter. Uh, another one actually uh, which, which is interesting and I'll tell a, a quick story on this one which is the, uh, the vanity, sanity, reality uh, values. The, uh, so Fred and I actually met doing, uh, doing an MBA, and um, as part of the MBA, you need to take all kind of classes you, you don't really want to take, like finance. And, uh, and we had this finance professor who um, we said, okay, you'll probably remember nothing about this class, but if one day you run a business, just remember that. Uh, remember that uh, you know, market share, he said market share is vanity, revenue is sanity, cash flow is reality. Which is kind of interesting for finance people. And, and I thought, uh, so we don't really drive the company like that from a finance point of view. Uh, but we thought it was a very interesting framework um, for different things, for everything in the company, to think that you know, as you grow your business, you end up with like, lots of data and KPIs and indicators that looks like that. And unless you know what really matters, you know, what's like a vanity metric as opposed to a sanity metric to a reality metric, you'll probably run into a wall at some point. Uh, so we decided to do that initially in marketing, and then we scale that culture in product, in communication, in finance, and everywhere. So that you know, whenever we talk about something, we know if it's a vanity metric or if it's a reality metric. Uh, and one thing you hear a lot about communities like us, and we say that all the time, we, we always talk about the number of members we have. We say we have millions of members and this and that. Actually, it's a vanity metric because you don't add value to your members by having members, right? You add value to your members by, in our case, by transporting members, by you know, offering a service and by, by having like good peer reviews between members. 
So, so that's one thing we, we pushed across the company. Another one we, we took from Facebook, actually, so we, we didn't really invent that one. Uh, done is better than perfect. Uh, again, as you grow, uh, it's key because you know, if you try perfection, you're never going to change stuff, you're never going to move, you're never going to release product features, you're never going to grow. Um, so, so, and you're going to miss the train. And finally, on growth, uh, we, we have this uh, value, which is never assume, always check. And, and it's kind of amazing how we, I guess, as founders and even as uh, all the people working at Blablacar, we tend to forget that, that most of the stuff we do have been done before. So always go and check and benchmark and talk to people because for 99% of the questions we have, there is an answer out there. And sometimes just in your company, actually, not even outside. Um, so that's one thing we, you know, we, we also foster as a, as a value in the company. So once you've done all of that and you start growing, as in a way we, we're quite lucky because it's happening to us and now we're growing super fast, you, you also need to start managing like more and more people, the bigger community, more and more countries. And, and the key is how do you synchronize all of that? And Fred is gonna touch on that. Thank you, Nico. Um, what, uh, what matters when you have gone through the innovation phase and the growth phase is to make sure that everybody is aligned and since you don't have lots of processes already in place in the company because everything is so new, um, you need some other kind of lighthouse or um, light that you can follow to make sure that you're taking the right decisions because you don't have a process to follow. And the values are really here to help everybody in the company to take the right decisions at the right moment given the circumstances. So in the synchronized phase, uh, we emphasize a lot the trust, because we know that trust is at the center of our network. Trust is what makes drivers and passengers ride together. Trust that links the drivers and passengers to blah blah car is what makes everybody using the service. And so we've actually uh, been through it uh, quite a lot uh, over the last months. We've created a superhero named Trustman. Some of you may have seen uh, his superpower is the rating that he has on all the sharing economy. Uh, services and we also made a, a framework for trust which is named dreams and uh, states what information you need to find in a sharing economy service to make sure that you trust someone you've never met um, so trust is very essential to us and that's why we formulated this value in trust with trust um, share more learn more is also a value that is very important to grow further and to synchronize because when you innovate, you learn new things. If you don't share them, you don't innovate together and you don't grow further. So um, what we do, what we do internally is uh, when we learn new things, we share them together because we need to make sure that we don't reproduce the errors that we've made before and that have been made by other people probably. And finally, the member is the boss. This should never be, never be forgotten. It's really at the core of everything we do. Um, our role is really to serve the community the best we can, and this is a, the central value that we are actually uh, applying at BlaBlaCar. So, so the, the final one, actually, the, uh, just to, to wrap up on all, all these values, I mean, the, the final value that really came out, actually, of the exercise we've done uh, during that ski weekend, was fun and serious, right? And that was really, that, that really, I think, characterized our community, our millions of members, but also our internal community, i.e. our company. And, and I guess what we, we found out uh, as a team is, and the reason we have both, both fun and serious is you need to be very serious individually, doing your work and being committed and being passionate about what you do to create collective fun. So, and for us, that was kind of the umbrella of, um, of all these values we created. Okay, so we wanted to share this with you today because we really believe that these values are universal and can make any sharing economy service grow further. And also a quick note, by the way, if you like our shirts, uh, they're very fun and if you want to share the values too, we have lots of shirts. Laura, Laura, Alexandra, Shirley, Justine uh, will be distributing them at our booth. Thank you very much. Thank you.